Hi, Dave here. And today we're going to check out the work of Barkour um, Ericsson. Um, I actually found his work through um, this podcast by... Shit, I forgot his name, but it's called Digital um, Artcast. I'll link the, the podcast in the uh, description below. And uh, when it comes to podcasts, I usually listen to them um, actually on YouTube. And um, because I spend most of my time, um, obviously, in YouTube. And uh, yeah, I did actually found, uh, fi find his work through um, that podcast. And uh, I'm so glad I did because he does have a very interesting kind of an... He's very artistic, I guess. Um, he's not like a typical concept artist. He has a bit of a fine art um, feel to his work. And like he does feel like an artist, you know? Um, and I do think he has maybe a background in traditional painting because a lot of his more... A lot of his digital paintings do feel like they have an influence um in or they're influenced by some kind of traditional um painting um anyway <laughs> so a lot of his work is actually more impressionistic which i like now somewhere a bit finer um he can kind of push it to a more refined kind of level um this this is actually a nice example of a mood painting for me um, it's not like so heavy on the details but it communicates the atmosphere um, and I like that he usually likes to keep it under um, one color um, scheme so it's not kind of overpopulating your eyes you know it's kind of easy to take in and um, I think he's also good with knowing when to stop I mean he can yes push it to a more refined um, level um, he does have like a few portraits that really um, that are a bit kind of fine art-ish, right? Um, but he knows when to kind of keep it um, simple, right? And he doesn't have like a lot of work in his art station. Um, I think it's been a while since his um, since he has like updated it. But um, I still recommend you check out his art station um, portfolio. Um, ship painting here under one color um, or hue. Um, scheme. It's very simple, but it's well done. Uh, maybe he did use the lasso tool here to kind of make this uh, sharp um, edge. Um, yeah, and it's so cool. Like, how does one make a digital painting look kind of traditional? Um, I think also Craig Mullins can do that kind of thing. It, 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 there's a way of making it look kind of artsy, right? Because often there is this kind of digital look, you know, it's a very kind of typical way of, say, rendering something where it's a bit too smooth and smooth and, um, I mean, that's kind of cool, but, um, like there's hardly any textures often in, the, in, the, in those kinds of, um, illustrations or paintings. But with the work of, say, Mr. Barkour here, it's a bit more, it has teeth, right? And to me, it feels good. Uh, maybe it's because I have, like, an inherent, um like um, interest in traditional paintings as well i do love watercolor paintings um especially the impressionistic ones um and he does have a bit of it although a lot of his work looks a bit kind of oil-ish um but uh, i don't know it has a nice feel to it and he also has brush variety in his work like he does use texture brushes to kind of just add a bit of um variation in the piece and I've noticed if you zoom in on his work, he does use um, color dynamics um, to kind of help with the texturing. Now for this piece, this sketch is actually, you can't really see it here, but there is kind of a nice variety of hues. Um, it's kind of all under the, the warm kind of um, side or temperature in terms of the hues, but I do like how he's, he's pretty good with spacing out the painting um, in terms of details. Like this ship right here is so... Um, it's a bit more simple compared to this character and even in the characters like this character is really more of a silhouette and this one right here is way more um, defined so there's this nice kind of even not, well not even but um, um what's the word it's uh, there's a hierarchy in terms of detail 
So obviously the focus is uh, going to be in this area or in this guy, right? Um, so he knows when to stop or he knows when to focus in on like adding details and he knows when to leave other areas kind of just vague. Even in the mountain in the background, it's just one silhouette and it kind of blends even in, uh, with the sky, right? Um, and in the sky, you can see a lot of like the strokes. So it's, it's, it gets even more vague as you go further away. So um, I actually, this is actually one of my favorite sketches um, ever. Just because of the way how simple it is and how painterly it is and how good it is at the same time, right? Like, it's a great example of how to be efficient and how to communicate the concept without spending too much time in it. And maybe I should try um, doing the, doing this sort of thing for my speed paintings, you know? Because um, sometimes I feel like I'm getting too much into the, like the rendering and maybe I should focus more on like the big shapes and just focus in on say 10% of the whole thing. Right, on just one specific area for like uh, maybe some extra details and shit, but um, yeah, awesome. Now, this one's another great kind of atmospheric um, mood painting. Now, it does involve this kind of character, but you can tell there are soldiers as well or knights in the background. Um, they're a bit vague, almost like a silhouette. Um, even the, sh the, the edges of the silhouette aren't even that clear. And, um, I like it. Um, lots of variety here. I mean, if you zoom, it's not, it's not a big photo or big image, but if you zoom in, you can see like a lot of textures, um, different types of brushes. And to me, he's a great example of the impressionistic kind of, um, painter, right? Where he's not going into fine detail. I mean, you can tell he does go deeper in the helmet a bit because obviously this character is the focus or this knight, right? But even in this kind of night, the hel the head, the helmet, especially in the in this kind of um, reflective area, that's really where the the contrast is at, right? Um, and again, it's a nice um, spaced out painting where the detail or the focus is just on a specific, a very very specific area, and everything else is just adjusted, right? Even the way the trees are painted, um, I'm not sure if he used some kind of um, branch brush, but. I think it typically just um, paints it in, like the branches and shit, um, but who knows. And it's a great way to save time, but it also adds a bit of an artistic impact in that it, le it leaves the viewer to kind of imagine what's in the background or what's not as defined, right? Um, and so it feels like, to me, impressionistic paintings are more engaging. They feel more engaging just because it gives more to you like it leaves you to imagine the rest and i like those kinds of things it's, it's the same way with like writing um where this kind of an open kind of ending where they leave it to you to uh kind of fill in the gaps and you know like they make you ask questions it feels more engaging that way um and i feel like a lot of his work uh, it, it involves more like scenes you know almost like keyframes to me um it does say in his art station that he's a lead artist uh, based in shit. I can't say this. Ray Javik, Iceland. Whoa, shit. Um, I think he works for like games, or he worked for games. But I feel like his work is um, they would be awesome in movies or films as well, because his work does have like a fine thing to it, even cinematic, right? Um, but not too cinematic like um, Alexander Mandarjev. Um, Worker is uh, a bit more, a bit of cinematic, but more like artistic, just traditional fine art-ish. Um, hopefully you can kind of get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Another great example of, oh, look at the hue variety here, right? You can see some blues, some reds, some greens, some orange, some purples, some pinks even a bit, um, some yellows, right? It's such a full paint. It feels full just because there's like the entire color wheel is almost in this um like i can feel the entire spectrum in this painting even though it's not super detailed uh it's um impressionistic um and shit all right and even in the the characters here a lot of them are kind of uh just vague kind of impressions um he does focus on some of the faces this uh, with these two chicks and um, this dude right I look at this nice kind of touch of red. It's a bit saturated and light. 
and it's kind of enough to just bring this guy out of this background just a bit, right? But not too much because obviously this guy is um, in shadow or this entire area is, is in shadow um, and, it, and it gets even darker here, right? But just adding that bit of red kind of pulls him away a bit so you can kind of see him at the very least, right? Even in this kind of, um, I'm not sure what this is, but um, this bit of yellow or orange, it's kind of enough, right? Um, and also spacing out the lighting does add a bit, bit of an effect, right? It doesn't have to be like one streak of light. For here, you can actually see an opening in this kind of a uh, structure or shed. Um, here, the, the light is actually broken up by this kind of silhouette of this character. And so it just it's nice to kind of uh, break things apart and not make it so like one big shape. Um, so that's pretty cool. And again, you don't have to go overboard with the details. Again, he's a great example of that um, kind of approach. Um, in some in some of his paintings, he does go deeper, especially in like a, a specific area. Um, and to me, that's kind of enough to kind of send a message, right? Or tell a story, right? And we do recommend you uh, listen to the interview with um, in that digital art cast uh, podcast. Um, and I was super glad that uh, I found workers through that. Uh, or I, yeah, <laughs> just because I've never. Excuse me, I'm just drinking coffee here. Um, um, it's uh, sometimes in if you go to like art station. Sometimes the work or the styles get too similar, and uh, I like seeing that weird, not weird, but that, that kind of different person. That has a very distinct kind of style and i feel like Burker, even though like the he is a bit traditional in a sense in his digital work he still feels so different compared to like other artists right um so this one maybe he did use some custom shapes for the bridge hard to say but uh again in this piece this ship writer has the most detail right and everything else is kind of atmospheric and moody and um, and he knows how to um, pick the right levels. For example, in this structure in the background, it gets even almost. It's almost like um. It's in the grayish kind of area. Even even in this area of this um thing, it's a bit grayed out. And whenever you see that, um, that's probably a way to kind of push it back, or you do that to kind of push things back to create this kind of a. Um, impression of uh, depth and um, it can actually help to make your piece or image or environment or scene look bigger and it helps with building that atmosphere right so maybe he did use a custom shape for this thing uh, to save time but he also likes putting like um, textures in the end I'm going to assume he does that in the end it's a uh, it's kind of like a canvas texture or something um, I'm not sure but I don't know, there are, I, I do find like a lot of scratches in his paintings and it does have a nice kind of look to it. It's very artsy, um, right? I like the way he did the highlights in this kind of a window screen, right? Um, nice uh, person here to kind of indicate scale. Um, and yeah, there's a bit of a storytelling thing here. Um, and what's so cool is that he doesn't limit himself to uh, like the cinematic frame, uh, the kind of long horizontal kind of frame, because uh, sometimes I do that, and I assume that's going to make my work even more cinematic. I mean, it does add a bit of that feeling, but you can make something that's a bit more like almost like a square, right? That's not too elongated um, horizontally, but still communicates something, right? So this one's more of um you're seeing it from above. Um, and look at how we simplify the buildings here, the structures in this area. Um, it has a very watercolor s kind of feel, right? Um, it reminds me of the work of uh, Zubovic. Zubovic, Zub ah fuck. Um, he's one of the the top watercolor artists, right? I can't remember his full name, but um, he's sort of in the world of like uh, Alvaro Castane, Castagnet, Castane. Um. And they usually have a way of simplifying, um, like, non-essential areas by just putting in like, putting in like, um, like a wash almost and just vaguely indicating an edge. And even the edges aren't even sharp. It's just like, you can see like breaks in the edges, 
but just seeing that massive value is enough to kind of suggest the building, right? Or some kind of structure. And I can see that in his, like in this painting right now. Um, and most of it, I don't think he uses a lot of 3D. I mean, he, I mean, I mean, with this skill, with this uh, painting skill, he could do that. But um, I don't know. I just like seeing paintings more because it feels more artsy, right? Um, and I do like the way he did the lights here in the bottom, like in the uh, the ground. Um, pretty cool. So this one's more of a, it does feel more like a fine painting to me, but he does focus in obviously on the face because that's the, the the main kind of focal point of the piece. But if you check out the background, there's so much variety, even if the whole thing is under like the warm kind of side, very yellowish orange, you can actually see some blues, some purples, some greens, right? Some blues here as well in the shadows, some greens here. So again, he's kind of pumping the piece with uh with the color wheel. Although whenever you use the entire color wheel, color wheel, you'll have to kind of tone down the, the saturation of some of the um, the hues, right? Because you don't want every single hue to be uh, at the same level of saturation. Because um, obviously in a specific piece, there will be certain hues that are going to be a bit more prominent, right? So yeah. And look at how this whole, her attire isn't even that super defined, but it's enough to suggest something, right? Some kind of scarf here, um, and even this, I don't even know what this is, but it's enough to show that she's wearing something, right? And uh, yeah. Cool. So this one's another, oh, this one's, this one has a more cinematic, uh, has a more cinematic kind of frame. Now maybe he did use a lot of, a little more photo bashing in this one, especially with the clouds and shit. Um, but it's still very moody. It still feels like he did it, so that's kind of cool. Um, I love how he did the sun here. Um, it's actually hard to do this. It's all, this one, this piece here almost feels like a matte painting. Um, they're kind of in a different level when it comes to photo bashing. Um, it's a bit more refined, I guess. And uh, yeah, I mean, they could. It, it's liter they're literally making paintings for like backgrounds and like films. So that's really really cool. Um, so there has to be a bit of an, uh, there needs to be a bit more reali realism in their work, right? It can't just be, you know, my kind of photo bashing where it's kind of uh, all over the place, right? This one's another uh, awesome kind of mood painting. Um, look at how in the edges of this painting, it's a bit vague. Um, and he focuses the detail, say, in these um, columns here on this side, right? Because obviously that's the part in light. Um, and for this part, he did separate, he, he did enough change, or he did change the values enough to kind of show the edge of this column and plus another column behind that, behind this column, right? Um, and look at the variety again. Maybe he did do some photos in the beginning to kind of uh, get a good start, and then he kind of painted over that. And maybe along the way he'll add like extra textures. Here you can actually see him use a few. Um, and what's so cool is that he doesn't overpopulate it again. Um, he uh, It's very kind of a minimal... He has some minimal touch when it comes to like photo bashing or adding photos or adding textures. Um, I'm going to assume he used some photos here, um, but that's just my guess. Or maybe he did not, I'm not sure. but. To me, the, these small textures feel like photo textures to me. So the point it the the point it the point is sorry it isn't like too much, right? The focus is obviously on this kind of creature. It's kind of bursting in, and you can tell it's kind of in the center. Um, there's this nice contrast between this light opening and this actual creature. So the contrast is going to be mainly in this area, and. Um, I like how there's a bit of yellow here coming from uh, these lights, right? Um, some indication of like rocks flying off and it shows movement, right? So that's kind of a cool thing. How, like, how do you indicate action through a painting? Because the painting is like a still image, right? But uh, you can give the impression of something. So he's definitely good 
at this sort of thing. And look at this creature. It's not even super defined. I don't even know what this thing is. It's kind of like an octopus. Um, maybe with some legs or something, but... You know, it makes me wonder, right? Um... Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And um, I think if, if you had like a portfolio of paintings in this level, you would be amazing. <laughs> so this one's more of a... Um, it, it actually reminded me of Craig Mullins a bit because Craig Mullins also likes to uh, do this kind of light thing. We'll just uh, He'll pick an area where he'll put the light. So it's not like the entire scene is almost always not um, lit. Like, he kind of picks and chooses. And the same goes for, like, Borker here. Uh, Mr. Borker Erickson. Um, and you can look at how he did the background. It's very, very vague. And even in this kind of staircase, the first three steps are the one in light. And he doesn't have to, like, do every single thing. Um, once you kind of fill in the gaps or give information in one area, if the thing is kind of has a repeating thing to it, um, the person viewing the image can just kind of transfer that information to everything else right so that's kind of a cool thing for example for this kind of carriage all you have to do really is just define one wheel or a part of the wheel and then you can just leave it leave everything else to just be um a vague representation of a wheel right so that's pretty cool um and look at this nice contrast between purple and green um think the hulk right it's a nice complementary kind of uh, color scheme so uh, that's pretty cool now this one actually feels more like an oil painting, um, like a traditional oil painting, but uh, I do think he uh, did this in Photoshop, I think. And maybe he did use some smudge tools here. Um, I do think he did this in Photoshop. Sometimes it's hard to tell, and that's actually uh, pretty cool, you know, it's kind of hard to tell whether it's um, traditional or um, digital. Because he has a way of like blending that kind of makes it look very, very um, traditional. And he, his use of textures, I'm not sure if they're coming off from the brush or he kind of included the texture in the brush settings or he's doing it after. I'm not sure, but uh, it has his work has teeth or has grit. So it kind of um, grabs on to the eye because um, sometimes when you see like, you know, th these very highly rendered stuff, um, usually they're kind of very soft, right? Um, they're kind of, they feel like they're just passing through the screen, even if they're like a still image, you know? But if you have something like this, where it has a bit more like grit or teeth, it feels like it stays with the eye. I don't know. That's just me. Another moody piece. Um, now this guy is really just a silhouette. Um, some lighting coming from the front and you can see a bit of like light brown here and some reflected light from the back, you know? It's a bit of a, a blue-green kind of... Um, um, thing, right? And look at how this whole ship isn't fully defined. Uh, this part is obviously the more detailed area, the top part, and everything else is kind of just vague. And it does have a very atmospheric, kind of epic feel, right? And the use of the breeze, you know? And I like how, how it's kind of split. This area obviously is going to be in the dark. Uh, so, and as you kind of go up, where the debris can kind of, or th these sorts of particles can meet the light, it actually captures the light. And you can see these sorts of cool um, highlights in the uh, the particles and shit, right? And again, if you kind of zoom in um, on this, say, ship, you can see some greens and reds. Like, it has a bit of everything in it. In it. But again, you can't, you know, like, pump up, pump up the saturation too much. You have to kind of tone it down. To kind of make sure it's there, but not like it shouldn't take the attention away from the main kind of um, feeling or story, right? Um, this one's more of a a fantasy kind of piece. Um, um, it does feel more like an oil painting. And you can tell, I think he did use some photo textures to start off with. Um, it's kind of a common technique to uh, get the, uh, to start with the photo. Maybe to blur it a bit or something. So you can kind of get the color uh, palette from that photo. Um, awesome, right? 
and this whole kind of uh, structure it reminds me of Gondor, <laughs> uh, the the thing in um, that city near Mordor um, in the Lord of the Rings. Um, it kind of reminds me of that, right? Um, and as you go further to the background, you'll see a lot more of his strokes and th the shapes become slim uh, simpler, right? I'm not sure if he uses some kind of mixer brush as well. Um, or a smudge tool. Maybe maybe he did use it for this one. But again, it's hard to say because um, I think he did. But, th but then again, this could be like a traditional piece. <laughs> it's hard to say. Um, ooh, some architectural study here. I mean, nice. Look at how it gets even vaguer here. Um, the sky is pretty like solid though. Um, but as you go further away from this area, like this area is the one with the most detail. And your eyes kind of brought into this area first because of the uh, the amount of contrast. Like it's a, a mix between very light and very dark um, spots. So your eyes going to be pushed into this area or brought into into this area first. Um, and if you kind of just zoom in or just focus in on certain areas of this painting, it uh, it's not like super defined, right? Here it does get like sharper, but it's a uh, it's a bit loose, right? But it's awesome. Um, this one has more of a John Singer Sargent kind of feel to me. Um, and look at how he has some reds here, some greens, right? Some bluish purple stuff. Some greens here, some blues, some reds. Um, it's very subtle, but it's there. Um, and again, you don't have to be so detailed, right? And again, an an this is another example of, you know, being enough, you know, while still communicating something that's understandable and that's actually kind of pretty and beautiful at the same time right and it does use like a lot of texture brushes also um it does make it look more i think it helps to add to the the grit you know um this one's more of like a factory industrial kind of site um oh he does have like a few rake like brushes here okay um Lots of textures, very oil painting-ish, um, very moody, um, very atmospheric. Could this be in Iceland? I, I have no idea, but... Um, and you, I've seen artists kind of do this in the background, where yeah, they do, they do leave it as a, uh, a silhouette, but they actually... Um, like the, the, the edges of the silhouette are very clear, but for Burkur and for most traditional kinds of artists, they usually leave it as... An impression, like a vague kind of suggestion. Like the edges of it are kind of wishy-washy. You know, it doesn't have to be like a clear-cut thing. Because I feel like the moment you kind of clear up the edge, it brings a bit too much attention. And I mean, if that's your intention, sure. But usually he does like clean up the edges in the area of focus instead of like the background and shit. So, yeah. Oh, he has this kind of thing where he did like a, a bunch of head studies. And uh, maybe I should do this as well for my... Because um, I'm trying to study human anatomy as well, and I'm kind of focusing on heads and faces and shit. And uh, just seeing this sort of thing, um, this compilation of studies, is uh, pretty inspiring, you know? I mean, I'm pretty sure by the end of your... by the end of like this whole um, session, um, over a span of like a month or something, or a few months, you'll know how to paint the face. Um, right? So that's pretty cool. So maybe these are master studies of some kind. Um, all in grayscale. And, uh, I think it helps to kind of study things in grayscale so you can focus more on the, the values. If you're trying to study color, then study color. But if you're trying to study, say, faces, and you want to kind of paint the face, maybe it's better to, uh, do it in grayscale so you can kind of take away the need to be, you know, like, you're kind of adding too much when you combine all sorts of things, you know? Oh, this one's like a super rough sketch, but look at how gritty it is. You can even see a bit of canvas texture-ish coming off the brush. Um, it's a great kind of um, speed painting or sketch. Um, maybe it does have some kind of smudge tool. Uh, it's hard to say. Oh, he did use a lasso. For like these leaves or some of the leaves and uh, it's cool 
nice contrast here. This one is almost kind of like a light blue white. And then, yeah. Great kind of study. Maybe this is some kind of study, but uh, I do like it. I, I, I like seeing the strokes in the painting. Um, now this one is more of a sci-fi piece. Um, this is uh, another example of that kind of focused area of detail painting thing. Where in this case, it's the head and a bit of the chest and shoulder that's way more detailed. And as you kind of go through the lower arms or through the, the torso and the legs, it uh, you can see this, uh, it's a kind of a quick shift of detail. It gets very detailed here, then just a few steps further, it kind of becomes more impressionistic and vague. And even you can see this guy right here, it's just like a, a chest plate thing, plus um, an, an indication of a face. And the background is kind of like, um, it's kind of blurred, maybe motion blurred with some flare, lens flare kind of effects. Very epic looking. Um, and even for this machine here, that she's kind of um, uh, working on or working with, uh, it's, it, you can see a lot of the, a lot of the uh, the brushstrokes. So it gets even more um, vague or suggested or impressionistic, right? And again, look at that um, hue variety here: greens, purples, reds, oranges, blues, greens, blues, reds, oranges. Purples, oranges, cyan, almost like a cyan purple. Um, it has the whole package. Ooh! <laughs> and again, lots of textures. It's not super strong here, but uh, it's there. Like if, if you zoom in, there, there's all sorts of like textures in it that help add to that kind of uh, grit, you know? Even in the, even the knuckles here are kind of suggested with just two strokes with a round brush. Pro, um, he did kind of indicate the uh, this kind of belt thing for for the uh, the leg, um, and I do suggest if uh, hopefully the the, st uh, the the artist that you were studying, kind of um, hopefully they post like a, a bigger image, like this one, because at least here you can kind of see even more um, his brushstrokes, right, and it looks pretty cool. So he does have have like a texture brush. And he also uses that with a simple round brush sometimes, and um, yeah. Ah, it's so pretty. <laughs> Maybe I'll make this the, uh, oh shit. I was going to make this the, uh, the thumbnail thing, but it's kind of a portrait, so it's going to be hard to see, but who knows. Um, oh, this one's a close-up. Jesus! Now this one is a bit like, this. this is an example of its more finer stuff. Um, like the entire thing is almost pretty much detailed, right? It does get vaguer and more impressionistic in the 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 in the the lower areas, but Jesus, some photo bashing, right? But he does know how to paint, so it doesn't feel like it's photo bashed. Um, and that's the cool thing about being a good painter first is because the moment you start photo bashing, you know when to stop with it, like you know when to kind of make things vaguer. Um, just because um, you can see it through or, or you know how to paint, right? And you know when to uh, reduce the amount of detail and sometimes when you're... Because for me, I started out really... Uh, I started I started getting too good at photo bashing that I... It became... Like my shit would become so freaking full of details and it would not... Like there's hardly any kind of atmosphere, no design, you know? The photos would just lead the painting but for him, he's a bit different, you know? He's a painter first and then... A designer, well, not designer, but a photo basher, second. Like it's more of a tool, right? He's not dependent on it. Uh, but together, uh, combining his skills, it his work becomes like amazing. I think he just painted the face, right? It's kind of it's so kind of real to me. It almost feels like three D. But if you zoom in, you can actually see the uh, the shit. You know what? Fuck it. I have no idea. Maybe he's just that good. You know, <laughs> I love this kind of highlight here. Um, the back. I love the background though. It's it's almost like an abstract kind of painting. Um, I'm not sure if he did it himself. Maybe he did. Oh, this could be like some kind of smudge tool here. Holy shit, bro! Oh shit! Look at the amount of textures in this. 
And all of the, the, the different light sources, you can see some yellows here, some reds from the background, kind of reflected light. Um, and you can tell like this part is kind of metal-ish. Um, and I love how he, he was able to suggest that without using like silver or gray. He did it through blue. So that's kind of a cool thing. And there's this nice shift, blue, kind of dark blue, some orange and green. So it's not just one solid color. You know, it feels like this um, character is in a scene. So that's kind of nice. Awesome breastplate here. Um, you can even see some of the, the bigger or the uh, the round brush work here. And again, lots of hue variety, as you can see. Oh, in this part, he did use like a pencil kind of stroke. Wow. So you can make it look impressionistic while still making it look really, really fine. I mean, Jesus. Um, And you can even see that pencil like stroke here. Wow. Wow. And this highlight here. Wow. It's a very sharp kind of corner. Ah. It's been a while since I've actually seen his work. So I'm glad I'm doing this um, art review. Um, oh, this is a, an example of the more fine art-ish kind of look. Very, very textured, gritty. And uh, yeah, you can see a lot more textures here. Um, the face does become more fine. And even the hair, he did use like a lot of texture brushes for the hair. Or all throughout the piece, essentially. But the, uh, the hue variety is still there. Um, and you'll notice, even if the whole thing is kind of uh, in the green kind of hue um, side, you can see some reds here. Right? So it has a nice kind of complementary thing going on. Um... It's, uh, green is more of a cool uh, color, and red, purple, they're more like, um, is purple cool or warm? Kind of. <laughs> oh, it's more warm, actually. Um, but yeah, you can see some reds, some greens, right? Some, some yellows. So it's kind of a full painting. It feels like a full painting, right? Some blues here, it's more of a blue-green, but um, it's there. And look at how he did even detail to like, the, the dress, right? It's just an impression of it, but if you zoom out, wow, right? Wow. Awesome. So this was, this one's more of a, a speed painting, I would assume. Um, he did simplify the background and you can see some rough indication of some land here. Um, and the dog is obviously, the dog has like a sharper edge. Um, it's, it's still mostly a silhouette, but you can tell like um, it has a bit of lighting in it. Um, but because the edge is kind of sharp, like in the in this kind of silhouette, the focus is go going to be on this dog, and the fact that it's kind of implanted in a kind of light background here, you can see behind the dog, it's a bit light in terms of value. The 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 focus is going to end up in this area, right? And for these sorts of rocks and shit, or this um. In this area, you can see more of the, the texture brush work here. Maybe I should make one kind of like this, right? It has a nice, it has a nice look to it. So maybe I'll make one as well. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, pretty cool seeing it right now. Another example of uh, that kind of fine art kind of look. It gets very fine here, very very smooth. And even if it's smooth, it's not like a- it doesn't feel like so digital-ish. Like kind of a render thing, it feels very artsy. You can see like a lot of the, the strokes, but they're kind of like lightly faded. And again, there's this nice uh, variation of hues. You can see some reds here, some orange. Maybe a bit of blue, it's hard to say, but uh... Like it's not just one solid color, you know? Like the environment kind of implants, implants itself onto the actual figure. You can see a bit of the background in the hair as well, and in the uh, in this kind of dress. Um, nice highlight here. Um, hmm. Even if this is kind of lighter than th than this part, um, your the focus still ends up in this area just because of the amount of contrast. Like this hair is kind of dark, um, and the face is kind of light. Um, so even if this is technically kind of lighter. Um, because this is the area where the contrast is at the most, this is going to be the area of focus, right? 
Again, lots of textures, lots of hue variety. Even the, uh, the hair is kind of just very, very impressionistic, right? You can see a lot of like textures and you can see a lot of his brush strokes. Um, and I like seeing th th these sorts of things where I can see the brush strokes. Um, but the whole painting isn't like that. Like he, do he does refine things with the face. Kind of like this chick as well. Where is it? Right? The face, the head, the head design is a bit refined. Um, same thing with this. It gets kind of slightly more impressionistic in the lower part, but in this area, it gets really, really high quality, right? Damn. I wonder how long this would take, you know? Like this, this, these sort of paintings would take. Um, So this one's more of a knight with a horse. No shit, bro. Um, very, very... The back, there's this nice contrast of um, detail. Like the background is very, very uh, impressionistic. <laughs> it's like very, very sketchy and just vague. Lots of textures, right? But with this kind of knight and his horse, his horse, um, it's a bit more refined. It's still impressionistic. I mean, if you zoom in, there's hardly any detail in it. It's just an impression, but, um, fuck. It feels tighter. Maybe it's because the shapes are clear, or maybe it's that, yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be so detailed for it to kind of, uh, you know, um, communicate that this guy is a knight, you know? Just focus on the big shapes, right? Just make the edges clear, clearer than the background or something. And that's kind of enough, um... Even the hand, look at how he didn't even paint like the fingers. Um, I mean, you can, but you can tell like there, there's the, 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 the knuckles are here, um, the thumb is here, so it's, it's enough, right? Oh, and here you can actually see a bit of that color dynamics. Um, and he did turn on the per tip kind of um, option. Uh, it helps to add a bit more texture, right? Greg Rutkowski also does that because he does have like his work feels very um, they feel like oil paintings but they're kind of sharp and if you kind of zoom in on his work he does like to also use the um, the color dynamics to, uh, to add a bit of um, texture as he paints right now this one's more um, I like how he did the white part here um, it kind of shows that this it this has kind of a latex kind of um, texture to it like this coat so you can see this kind of like highlight um and i like how it indicated the rain without having to use that because there's a way to do a rain effect in photoshop but for him it just kind of painted the strokes and should suggest should suggested the strokes right and the background is kept simple i mean you can see the round brush right i feel like using the round brush is kind of like um a way to assert your dominance <laughs> as an artist like you can if you can paint shit or if you use it in your work i feel like it's um it's kind of a, a power move you know Ugh. again the texture brush he likes using that along with the round brush looks really really cool um he does have a different brush for this kind of highlight and uh, the white thing and uh, i love this piece right it's not so textured because obviously this um, is a latex kind of thing. Um, more uh, the textures are mostly in the background actually. Um, I love the way he does the face. Um, they're very pretty and kind of realistic. Maybe the studies where uh, he did like maybe the studies do help to make his uh, faces more um, realistic, right? Yeah, maybe I should do more like. Uh, they don't have to be big paintings, right? <laughs> okay. Cool. Wow. Right, look at that hand. It's just a silhouette with this dash of white, right? A bit of bottom lighting from coming off from the, uh, the latex being bounced into the bottom part of the hand, right? And even this hand is like not defined at all, but it, uh, it looks cool. Oh no, she's carrying something. It's a handbag. Okay. Damn. 
I look at how he's very choosy with the strokes. He's not like uh, wasting time. Um, it feels like his strokes are deliberate, you know. Um, kind of like Anthony Jones. Like if you see Anthony Jones paint as well, um, so, uh, he kind of knows when to be more like uh, painterly. Like he can fill an area quickly, you know, um, when he paints. And it feels very efficient seeing that. And I can see the same thing with this um, painting of Barker or Erickson. Um, now this one does feel more like an oil painting to me. Um, I, do, I do know it's, uh, it's uh, digital, but um, because of the way it was blended, it feels very oily. Uh, maybe he did use some layers here to kind of separate the... Uh, or maybe not. It's hard to say. Because uh, some of the branches feel so sharp. So maybe he, did, he, he um, painted this on one layer. Um, separate from the background. Um, I think so, right? He did paint the shadow of the tree here, right? Wow. The background is kept very, very vague and simple. Lots of textures. Um, so obviously this is the area of focus because this has the most contrast and the edges are way sharper, right? Um, and he paints the branches, so that's kind of a a ballsy kind of move, um, right? Damn! Ah, it's so pretty. Um, and everything else is kind of just left. Um, you can even see some of the uh, the brush spacing in some of in some of the the brushwork, right? It has a nice effect to it. Um, even the ground here, it's pretty cool. Um, like seeing this chaos, this kind of set of textures, awesome. Oh, a lot of that color dynamics here, and even here in the yellow part, um, it helps to add to the uh, the textures coming off the brush um, by turning on the color dynamics kind of setting, um, and. Uh, turning on the uh, per tip kind of thing, you're going to get even more um, textures um, and shit. Now in the sky, it's actually more of a gradient. Maybe he did use some kind of soft brush for that. Um, and that's why it looks kind of a... Uh, it doesn't look flat because sometimes when the whole thing has texture in it, um, it's going to make it look flatter. So maybe you should try to leave some areas, maybe the background less textured. Um, to kind of create that sense of uh, depth. Um, so this is another uh, cool painting and I'm going to stop right about here. Because <laughs> he does have like a few nude studies or paintings um, in his art station portfolio. And look at this though. I do think this was done digitally, right? But it looks so um, traditional. Just because of the textures and the way it was painted, it feels like a painting. Um, and look at that. Look at the, the, the beautiful brushstrokes here. Very, very artsy. Um, look at the shadows here. Even the shadows have their own like hue variety. You can see the purples. Um, or red, purple, maroon thingy. Um, purples, blue, indigo, green, reds. Damn. And I, I like seeing the brushstrokes here. Maybe he did use some kind of mixer brush. To achieve this kind of look, um, not sure, but I do know it looks very, 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 very painterly, right? Now the background is a bit um, abstract, um, kind of flat, but it looks cool. Um, very nice textures here coming off. I'm going to assume from the brush. Uh, wow! I look at the variety of hues here, right? It adds to the, it, it, if you include the entire color wheel again in your piece, it's going to make it look full and uh, beautiful. Whoa. Um, so that's it for this uh, art review um, episode. Uh, checking out the work of Borkor Erickson. Um, so I will link all of the, the interview with the digital art cast guy and also um, Mr. Erickson's um, art station portfolio. So yeah, keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.